magazines from uh, Code Magazine in the back, uh, some stickers as well, and we'll have a book giveaway at the end of the presentation. Uh, my name is John Calloway. We've got Clayton Hunt who is uh, frustratingly packing up his camera equipment. <laughs> um, we are still attempting to live stream to YouTube. Um, we will try again in the future. Um, we're still looking for he more speakers right uh, for 2019. Uh, more volunteers, more giveaways, um, anything and everything would help to make this a better meetup for you guys. Uh, please join us on Meetup Discussion Group. We've got a Facebook group, we've got a Twitter account, we've got a YouTube account that sometimes have videos posted to it. Um, yeah, if, if anyone is interested in speaking in 2019 or has any particular topics that you want to hear about, uh, then just let us know. Uh, mentioned earlier that we'll probably be going over to Hopper House or something afterwards. Uh, so join us uh, on your own time and um, hang out and, and get to know one another. Uh, so with that, we've got Andrew Boza speaking about ASP.NET, Core, SignalR, and SignalR service. All right, <laughs> round of applause for John and Blake. We're going to start rolling just then so it looks like you're all clapping for me. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, no, but seriously, uh, I wanted to give a talk just because, and um, this, this meetup has meant a lot to me since I moved back to Tampa after getting out of the Army, and so it's really cool to get to speak in front of all of you, so thanks to John for handing me this topic. When he asked me if I wanted to do a talk on SignalR, of course I wanted to do a talk, but I could just about spell SignalR. This was a couple months ago, and at the time I had extra time. Anyways, I learned as much as I could, but Red Dead 2 came out, so I played a lot of that too, all right? <laughs> So ask your questions as they come, just fire them off. Most of this is demo because that's how I like to, uh, that's the kind of talks that I like is when there's more demo than, uh, than slides. So if my head is down and I'm, I'm looking at my notes here, just shout out the questions. And if you know the answer, shout out the answer. Okay, all right. So, uh, oh, also I want to mention that um, I'm uh, working at uh, Next Tech Systems, and if you're looking, we're hiring. I get a fat check if I refer you, so come see me. Don't even take the, you know, pizza power away from the pizza people, but, um, you know, talk to them, talk to me, yeah, okay, it's all good. You got pizza? Don't have pizza. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll cut you in on, on the deal. Ah. All right, let's get rolling, because this, uh, this, the demo might take a while. Okay, so we're going to talk about what is ASP.NET Core sure. Signal R, and then we'll do a demo. And then we'll talk about scaling uh, your Signal R stuff with uh, Signal R service. And then we'll do a demo of that. And then we'll talk about using Signal R service with Azure Functions and do a demo of that. All right, so what is ASP.NET Signal, uh, ASP.NET Core Signal R? So, this is, I think, the branding that Microsoft is, is rolling with here with the new uh, SignalR. They've kind of rebuilt SignalR for the .NET Core platform. Um, I th my understanding is that it works much the same as the old one, but uh, because of .NET Standard and all this, they did have to do some significant rebuild. But it does the same thing as the old SignalR, which is that it adds real-time functionality to your web apps via server-to-client remote procedure calls. And it will do that, and this is why SignalR is so cool, it'll do that with WebSockets or server sent events or long polling, uh, depending on what it can negotiate with the client. Um, and so, you know, if you were to roll your own long polling or server sent events or WebSockets, like props and snaps to you, but if you just go ahead and pull this tool, this SignalR tool out of your, out of your rucksack, then you don't got to worry about any of that because SignalR abstracts all of that away. And that's, I think that's the real power here is that you don't really need to know. Heck, I don't know much about these technologies. Uh, I mean, I'll give you a high level. Long polling is when you just make a request and the server will respond if it's got anything new to tell you about. And if not, maybe you time out, maybe you try again. Server sent events is uh, you know, an API where you can create an HTTP connection and you can send events from server to client, whereas WebSockets can communicate in both directions. I think it's the latest and greatest of, of that kind of technology. And so SignalR Core, excuse me, ASP.NET Core SignalR will try that first. If that doesn't work, it'll try server send events. If that doesn't work, it'll try long polling. And you don't got to worry about any of that. Cool, right? Yes, OK, cool. All right, uh, all right so when would you use it? Um, so anytime you need to add real-time functionality to 
a web app, and I just copied and pasted these uh, use cases from the documentation. So any sort of high frequency update type app, like uh, games or voting apps or auctions or things with maps and GPS, you can use it for dashboards and monitoring apps. The demo you're going to see today is a collaborative app, and uh, so and any app that would require a notification, anything you want to see a badge icon on, you know, in your, your uh, application for. Ooh. Any questions before I move on? Great. Oh, let's go straight into the demo. I didn't know it's happening so soon. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's happening already. Let's look at what the demo application is. So I thought long and hard about what the demo should be, and most often if you go looking for single R demos, it's going to be a chat application. So I didn't want to just rehash a chat application. So I was thinking about where I would like to see real-time functionality and um, my previous team, hey Moses, used Azure DevOps for uh, tracking our backlog. And uh, we were often on the task board, like everyone at their workstation has the task board open for that sprint. And uh, someone would make a change. And it was like every other day, someone would say like, hey, I thought you updated this task. I did it. Did you refresh? Oh, OK. And you hit refresh, and then it gets updated. Because some of the things you do seem like they're happening in real time. Like as you can drag and drop stuff around, it seems like it's happening you know, for everybody. It's just happening for you, things like that. Um, so I made this little demo here. Let's create a new task board. Uh, let's wipe this out. Okay, so it's just got three columns. I can add a task in here. You're, you're, not you're not seeing this? Oh my gosh. Also yell at me if you're not seeing what I'm demoing. We were seeing what you're demoing. Okay, let's go back to the home page. Okay, here's the home page. We're gonna create a new task board. Alright. We're gonna add a task. Cool. Uh, so this is task board 1003. Let's go there, over here. And there's a task there. And uh, this user, the black hat user, will be black hat and white hat. Okay. He'll add another task. And of course, white hat doesn't see that until he refreshes. Boo. I'm going to update this in progress. This guy doesn't see it until he refreshes. Boo. Right? This is lame. No one wants to use this. Ugh, let's fix this. It goes away. Got to refresh. Finally. Oh my gosh. So boring. Okay, <laughs> let's add a uh, signal art to this. Um, actually, before we do that, let's just take a look at the source code so you um, can see what's going on here. I don't even know what's going on here. But okay, all right. Don't look at that. Okay. So. This is the uh, controller that's handling the uh, changes that are happening to those tasks. Um, one thing I want to note is I'm gonna, you're going to see the terms uh, work items and tasks used interchangeably from client to server. And I'm going to say tasks a lot, but on the, on the, on the uh, server code here, you're going to see work item. And that's because I started using the word task and I realized, oh, I'm going to need that for this. So work item is the, uh, is the model we're working with here. Um, it's very simple, it just has, uh, let's go take a look at it. It's got an ID, content, it knows what column it belongs to, knows its order in the column, and it knows what task it belongs to. Okay, so uh, this is where we're getting our task. Go ahead. I'm sorry? Make it a little bigger. You want it larger. There we go. Is that bigger? Is that good? Okay. All right, so when we get the task, we're uh, using this controller action here. Um, anytime we're moving around tasks, update tasks is getting called. It's just updating all of the tasks for that task board all at once. Um, if we add a new task or update the content of a specific task, update task is getting called. And if we delete a task, delete task is getting called. So we're going to visit all of these as we go through the demo. Um, so I just want to make you aware of what's going on there. The front end is written in React. Um, so uh, if something is very confusing to you about what, what you're seeing in the front end, just, just ask away. Okay, so let's add SignalR to this ASP.NET Core project. Um, the uh, library you need is already built into the, uh, to this right here, Microsoft.ASP.NETCore.app. It's, uh, it's hidden away in there, so you don't have to add any packages at all. You just come over to your startup. Come over to your startup. Yeah, you're right. Okay. And we're going to add signal R. 
Thank you. That's my talk. No, I'm just kidding. So <clears throat> that just wires up the uh, dependency injection stuff that SignalR is going to need. And um, we'll see a bit more of that later. Um, so we're going to come back to startup in just a second. But I'm going to save this. And we are going to create a hub in this folder that I left here called hubs, which is nice. So the way that uh, SignalR works is basically you create a hub or hubs in your application and it, uh, you can kind of think of a hub in SignalR like you would a controller in MVC, okay? So it's going to handle that request. It's going to be what receives messages from the client and what issues out messages to the client. Okay, so we're going to call this new class task board hub. It's going to inherit from uh, and there we go. Alright, we're going to leave that there, go back to startup, and we're going to add a little bit of middleware here. I don't like my space name. We're going to use SignalR. First we added it, now we're using it. Ah. So just like use MVC below, we've got uh, this anonymous function in here. Uh, takes routes, and we're going to do something very similar to what you're seeing below. It's going to be routes dots. Instead of map route, it's going to be map hub, and we're going to feed that the task board hub we just created. And we're going to, in here, set what the endpoint is going to be uh, to reach our hub. We'll call it task board hub. So it'll be our URL slash task board hub to reach the task board hub. Okay, uh, let's pull that in. What should I call this? Okay. Is that better? That's much better. Very good. Okay. So, um, great. We're going to let our server side code sit for a bit and we're going to add SignalR to our client application. Uh, everything's so big, I can't find anything. Yeah. Alright, where are we? Just a moment. So we're going to add the SignalR NPM package. And that is at ASP.NET slash SignalR. I'm going to get a specific version that I know worked when I tried it before. Right. <laughs> That's cheating. Right? Yeah. <laughs> get latest. Huh? <laughs> Okay, so most of the work, I'm gonna let that run. did that work? Looks like it probably worked, right? Yeah, that worked. Good. Uh, all the work that we care about uh, for the client app is being done in this component that is called task board page. It kind of does everything so that I could stay in this one spot. All right. Um, and uh, if you don't much about if you don't know much about React, just know that this uh, component did mount method on this task board page class uh, is a lifecycle method which will get called once the component mounts to the DOM and so it's usually where we do API calls and stuff. So I'm going to import what we need from the package we just installed. And what I need is called hub connection builder. We're going to use this to build our connection to the hub. Okay, good. All right, now what? Okay, <laughs> now we want to create a hub connection. I'm calling some method that I haven't yet defined, so let's define that here. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a hub connection. We'll call it connection. 
connection. We use the builder and we're going to feed that build <coughs> that endpoint that we defined in the startup.cs. What was it called? Test board hub? So now we have a connection, and um, we want to use that connection to connect to the hub. So um, for reasons that will become clear later, I'm going to create another method called connect to hub. We'll pass it our connection, and we'll define that down here. To actually connect using the connection, you call, oh uh, no, not constructor, mm, no. start is what we want. And if that fails, we'll catch. And because there's no sort of built in retry logic, we're going to just add some of our own here. So we would catch an error. And we're going to log that out. That part's not really important for ASP.NET or SignalR, but just so I'm showing you what you might do to handle this yourself. Call ourselves. Pass the connection in again. We'll wait. We'll wait five seconds. Okay. Also, if we did successfully connect and we lost our connection, we're going to call that again. So we're going to say, what's it called? On close. On close, we're going to go ahead and try connecting to Hub again. Now, this all happens to be in a React. Page, but it's all just vanilla JavaScript that yes shipped. Yes, thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, the, the code that I'm writing here is just JavaScript. It just happens to be kicked off by this React lifecycle method. Right. So this is where we're starting off this this um, ordinary JavaScript. Yeah. Sorry for my ignorance. I don't really know JavaScript, but it's like C sharp or no. It's programming language. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's got some object-oriented aspects. It's got some functional programming aspects, kind of all tossed together. Yeah. And it's uh, it's the code that runs in the browser. Okay. So, Syntactically similar to Java and C sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But mm -hmm. that's where it ends. Yeah. Let me make another. another Go ahead, uh, please. So, so JavaScript is a. Uh, 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 I would define it. It's a standard that is open. It was made by a consortium. Yeah. And it's kind of like, uh, it works work. with HTML and CSS. And you do the programming for the web. Uh, so web programming. Yeah. Yep. Doing web programming, you're doing JavaScript. Right. Okay, so now when our. Go ahead. Well, the other question I really meant was what I'm seeing here is like. Visual Studio, but it's React. You're saying this is React front end. Oh, um, okay. Uh, uh, so maybe I shouldn't have used React because uh, I've never used. React. Well, this is VS Code. Yeah. So this. So I'm, yeah, I'm using VS Code as my editor. Oh, okay. Um, and when I say this is React, what I mean is like what what uh, everything that's inside this client app folder here is the source code for a React spa, a React single page application. And so what happens is when you navigate to my website, you're going to download all the JavaScript you need for the React application, which will run in the browser and communicate with the server through calls like the ones that we just did. Okay. Yeah. Then it's running this. Right? You could have done it with an ASP.NET yeah, page. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, but I didn't. Cool. My bad. Okay. We'll keep rolling though.